Uh, I want to introduce the Jedi Master of the San Antonio City Council. He is the uh, the Grand Poobah for the City Council, the seventh largest city in the country. Everybody, please welcome Roberto Trevino. <laughs> Councilman, I want to thank you for coming on here, taking time out of your day uh, from busy governing and coming down here and talking to us. Thank you, sir. Oh, no, thank you. I'm glad to be here, uh, really. Uh, and I enjoy that intro. That's, uh, uh, again, John Williams, uh, you can't beat it. <laughs> oh, you can't. It. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Of course, that's... Although Jerry Goldsmith comes a close second. Well, you know, I was going to say, uh, you, you talked about the Star Wars holiday special. I was going to say the Bill Murray, uh, Star Wars, nothing, nothing but, but Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> the <laughs> piano good. bar. I think I found a new Rogue One. Yes. <laughs> oh, that'd be fantastic. Don't let them in. Hey, I love that. That was that was classic. Uh, now, a city councilman from District 1, which is the downtown district for Center, Center City. city. Actually, it's just, it's just south of here. It comes all the way up to the airport. Uh, all the way to the medical center and all of downtown. So it's kind of the, the, the centerpiece of, uh, of, of the city of San Antonio. And you are a tried and true geek going way back when. So, so Way back. So, but now you are, you are sitting at the seat of power itself. How did that come about? Well, I, I figured I couldn't get on, on Jedi Council. I might as well get on city council, right? <laughs> there so, you go. Absolutely. Um, Quite a consolation. They gave you there. the rank of master, I hope, when, when they put you on the council. Yes, uh, you, that's automatic. That's what all this right. pin is about. Good news. There we go. Um, well, you know, actually, that's the thing. You were mentioning, you know, geek, geek is mainstream, and I think a lot of us grew up uh, that way. And, uh, you know, I, I credit a lot of a lot of uh, the person that I became uh, because of, of some of the things that, that I enjoyed a, as a kid. Star Wars made a huge impact on my life, and I, I, was, I was so interested in not only the movie, but the craft of that movie, how it was made, and and it was so interesting. I watched everything there was about how they made that movie, and I learned that George Lucas was really into the craft, into uh, the special effects, the sound, um, you know, all the folks that, that went with him. And he was he himself was a, was an architectural student at some point uh, before he went to film school, and so you you can see that you can see that in the movie, you can see that craft, and so. I learned to appreciate that, and I would credit a lot of that inspiration for for me becoming an architect. I'm an architect by trade, and uh, and trained myself to 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 learn that skill. But I, again, I just uh, I, I'm, I'm just a super geek. I've, I've designed uh, projects where uh, the clients themselves have, have asked me to do some special sci-fi stuff in their homes, and I'm happy to do it. Um, and then and then uh, this this uh, evolution into city council. Uh, was really, really uh, uh, kind of a, a next great step for me. Uh, it's, it's in line with, with the mythology of, of, of uh, Star Wars and that you know, you, you're, you're, you're learning about very basic things that, that, it's, uh, that can teach somebody about their lives, about how, how to give back, how to see beyond yourself. And, uh, you know, that's what Star Wars is for, for people like me and yourself uh, is it's the modern mythology. Mythology was the first me uh, methodology to teach people uh, the difference between good and, and, and bad. And, uh, you know, we could, we could all uh, learn a really great lesson from, from some stories or epics like Star Wars. And, uh, and so I love... I love using that that vehicle. I love being a part of it. I love uh, all that, that that is Star Wars. I I, I dressed up uh, many times as as my favorite character, which is Han Solo. Yeah. For many reasons, and uh, and so uh, and and so since I've been on council, I've I've actually taken the position as a council member to to try to uh, influence other kids, uh, influence this this idea that that this kind of stuff is not just fun. But it means something, right? Now I, I have to know, since since I mean you're there at at the seat of power there in in City Hall. Any any time that you've ever gone into the council chambers, stood up in front of everybody in your best voice and said, "I am the Senate." 
No, no. Uh, again, because uh, as Han Solo, I mean, I, I've always considered myself kind of uh, apart from those kind of things. I, I, I like to to kind of think my, think of myself as as a rogue or a scoundrel. Uh, and, and and Han Solo he really played that foil for Star Wars. Right? He he was like the every person. And uh, you know, one of my favorite lines in Star Wars was his, which he says, "You know, hokey religions and ancient weapons are no no match for a good blaster by your side." And really, what he was trying to say was, that, "Look, hey, everybody could be Han Solo. Everybody could be that guy. You just and 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 it's choice. You know, he was a guy that you didn't know whether he was going to be good or bad, and he chose to be good. He chose to you know fight for the good side, and uh, and so I, I really enjoyed it. Plus." You know, the name is actually Hispanic, Han Solo. Mm -hmm. And then his partner was Chewy, Chewbacca. Anyway, that's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have done something, though. You did bring a little geeky touch to the council. Oh, yeah, all the time. In fact, uh, I have I have uh, two very, very accurate Han Solo costumes. I have the, the A New Hope uh, Han Solo costume, which I've worn to, to City Hall. I actually had a meeting with the city manager in my full Han Solo costume. Oh, that'd be awesome. I have, I have probably what's got to be the most accurate and, and coolest um, um, holster, leather holster and blaster. Uh, I've made it as accurate and, and, and close to the original as possible. And you got that past security? Yeah, I did. I don't. I don't. I, luckily, I don't have to go through security. Oh, that's right. And so, um, and then, uh, and then I have a Bespin Han Solo, which I actually attended one of our council sessions. We call uh, where we all get together. Press is there, and I'm literally in my Han Solo costume <laughs> <laughs> attending a council session. You know, and I, the the best part is that I think people can appreciate what I'm doing. I, we we the reason I was there dressed up was. Not just because, but because it was May the Fourth. May the Fourth be with you. And we were we were doing a lot of great stuff for kids, and um, you know, I just I think everybody can appreciate that what 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 these kind of things uh, really permeate uh, our culture in in a, in a big way. Now, the biggest torch that you carry, as far as the the city is concerned, is uh, the revitalization of Little Italy, which is uh, just north of northwest of downtown, and bringing kind of your your architect's touch to downtown in in general. Uh, are there any are there any geeky touches? that maybe you want to incorporate somewhere in the future? Well, I'll tell you, today we just approved the new river barge. Have you heard of this? Uh, so, you know, we have a, a river walk is, we have two things here that are the most popular uh, items in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the, the, the number one is the river walk, right? And number two is the Alamo. And, uh, of course, they're side by side. And um, we're currently re uh, reimagining the Alamo. We've got a huge master plan for that. And it's a great big effort with the state of Texas and the Alamo Endowment and the city of San Antonio. But we're also revamping a, a big a big piece of the Riverwalk, which is the barges themselves. And, I mean, I think everybody's taken a barge ride in, in the past. Oh, yeah, they're great. And, and those barges, you know, they, they've been around since the World's Fair, 68 World's Fair. Mm. It's the exact same design. Not much has changed. They're gas-powered. And uh, we wanted – it was time for an upgrade. And so um, in that process – you know, we were having a difficult time uh, getting people to uh, respond to a more innovative barge. So I actually uh, was in charge of creating a design competition with the American Institute of Architects. And we created a, a, an international design competition, which yielded one of the coolest, most technologically advanced and, 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 and adaptable barges anyone's ever seen. It is. This thing is. Uh, seriously, if if, if if you really like geeky things, check out our new barge. We just uh, today authorized the manufacture of 43 new barges that will be coming next summer for, for, for the Riverwalk. Wow. We currently have the prototype in the water right now, which you have seen here and there. But uh, what we did is we approved the manufacture of the new barges. They're, this is the difference between the old barges. They're 100% truly handicap accessible. They are all electric. Nice. They're they're fully fully uh, adaptable, meaning we can configure them in almost any shape pattern. Uh, we can do all kinds of activities on these barges. Typically, people just take tours on these barges, but imagine having a yoga class. Oh, or, that or having cool. the symphony playing as it's going by. This, these barges are so configurable. They're they're really adaptable to so many things. They've got these these panels that that are water jet cut, so that we can put different patterns from papel picado to uh, maybe a Spurs logo on it. 
these things are, are, are beautiful. And it, and it really, again, it goes back to this idea of crafting things. And, and, and it's, it's, it, it's something I'm really proud of. So since you're in your Tony, Tar- Tony Stark cosplay, I have to ask, isn't an arc, arc reactor that's powering these boats? <laughs> you know, it's funny you mention that because um, we actually try to reach out to, you know, the real we, – we, we acknowledge that, um, that uh, Elon Musk is kind of the real life – uh, uh, Tony Stark, right? Yeah, we we actually true. we actually reached out to him to see if we can't uh, utilize some some of his innovative technologies and batteries to see about these these barges. Um, what we have is we've been working with a company called Torquedo, and it's a it's a package thing, and, and we've got some really innovative approaches. Uh, so so no, uh, we don't have an arc reactor, but boy, I, I, if we did, it would be pretty cool. Okay, and you host a movie night at your at the at your office. Yeah, well, um, you're, you're talking about uh, what we did uh, last year, the uh, and we're going to do again this year. Um, and again, I was I was I was mentioning the story to you. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, and I remember seeing this poster that said, you know, May 1977. I was there, and I'm like, God, man, it made my hair stand up. He's like, Yes, I was there. And um, and we got to talking about Star Wars, and my staff started asking me about it. And uh, you know, The Force Awakens was about to come out, and they said, Well. Um, you know, how was it? How, what, what do you remember? I said, well, what I remember was that I actually we didn't get to see it when it came out. We had to wait till it was at the 25 cent cinema because uh, when you're being raised by a single mom on a very limited budget, you really are picky about what you get to go do. And, and sometimes, you know, it's like, well, we can go eat pizza, uh, but we can't go to a movie. So mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't until later that we actually got to see it. But what I do remember was the hysteria. It was like... Uh, you, everybody was talking about this movie. I'm like, oh my god, we got to go see that someday. And so it, it, we didn't get to see it until the fall. Um, but again, as I, as I mentioned, it made a huge impact. And my staff said, well, wow, it's too bad you can't do anything about that now. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, it would be kind of cool. And I said, well, wait a minute. What what if we took a bunch of disadvantaged kids uh, to go watch this movie? And so we, we we came up with this idea of well let's just call let's just call Alamo Draft House so just like that just like that and um, you know I, I couldn't be more 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 thankful but we called them and they didn't give us one theater they gave us two theaters and we had to take two hundred and seventy kids holy cow and by the way these these are kids from all over the city uh, some of them homeless from the, some of the shelters the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, was was our partner, and they they they, they bust them in, and uh, we created these VIP badges. Oh, that's they, cool! They they brought in the the Spurs Coyote dressed up in Jedi garb. Oh yeah! Although I think he should have been Chewbacca, <laughs> um, and I was of course dressed up as Han Solo. We had the superheroes, um, and uh, you know it was just. It was such an amazing, amazing day. And then, of course, I, as I mentioned to you earlier, too, is we created this video intro. And, of course, for me, that was like uh, you, you, to see yourself in the Millennium Falcon before the movie, introdu- welcoming the kids. And then, by the way, the best part of this at, at Alamo Draft House, they showed this intro of, of, of me and Fred Chapabaca, Fred Chapa, my, my staffer, but we <laughs> called him Fred Chapabaca. We, we, we filmed it. Then they went into the movie, which was in space, too. And then afterwards, the, the kids said, you were in the movie? Because it looked like we were in the movie. So it was just awesome. And that video that, we're, uh, that he's referring to, we're actually going to have that up on our YouTube page at some point. We'll get it uploaded up there for you. We'll have it there by the end of the show tonight. By the, by the end of Taco Caller, Solark Pit, all of that, we'll have it up and ready to go. And, 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 and that event was done in conjunction with the, the champions of San Antonio. Yes, the champions of San Antonio, absolutely. They came uh, and, and they, they dressed up and, uh, you know, uh, they, they modify their uniforms. Uh, uh, there are costumes for 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 that, and, uh, and that was really, I mean, it's just uh, amazing that they, would, you know, they're so they're, that group is so giving. Uh, they're always always available, and, and and they have done so much for for the community. Uh, the kids' faces just light up when they see them. I mean, they have uh, one of the coolest Boba Fets you've ever seen, and so to be Han Solo, and then there's a Boba Fett next uh, to pretty cool. <laughs> and and you're going to be doing another event with the champions. So we're doing it again. We're you know Rogue One's coming up. 
And uh, we're going to be doing another video intro, which I'm super excited about. This time I'm going to be uh, here to uh, reveal I'll be Luke Starkiller. And, yes. you know, you it's really got to news on Get Your Geek On right here. Yeah. There we go. Well, well you got to be a real geek to know what that means, right? I mean, because quite frankly, I mean, Luke Skywalker was originally Luke Starkiller. So, um, you know, I'm kind of taking some of the con- conceptual art that Ralph McQuarrie, and that's another mm-hmm. thing. And Ralph McQuarrie really, really influenced me in my artwork. Um, and, and what he created for Luke Star Killer, and I'm, so I'm gonna I'm using that inspir- that as an inspiration for my costume. Now, quickly, because we're uh, coming up against the the bottom of the hour news break here, but l- let me ask you uh, just quick off the top of your head here: you get to put yourself on one set for one scene for any geeky movie in all of time and space. You don't get to act; you just get to watch it happen. What scene? What movie? Go. Uh, well, Princess Leia, job of the hut. <laughs> <laughs> to see Carrie Fisher walking out. Well, yeah. I can, uh, why not? Yeah. Well, I think all of us would have that same answer, to be quite honest. Yeah, that, that's that's that's. I mean, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was quite an amazing costume. Uh, and I understand that you have a a special announcement. This is uh, breaking breaking citywide news that you wish to make right here on Get Your Geek On. Yeah, well, I mean, I you know, I just want to say it, it's uh, it's it's coming up on. Uh, we, we just passed the national elections, but uh, you know we have uh, our citywide elections coming up in May, and I'm um, I'm here to 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 clarify and announce that I will be running for for District One for re-election and hope to get your vote. Uh, you know, feel like we're doing a lot of great things. We're we we feel like the 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 role that that I get to to play as a council member, uh, not unlike the roles that that we have admired in in sci-fi. Uh, you know, it's 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 an opportunity to help people. It's an opportunity to, to 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 utilize resources, to do some really special things for people, and I'm I'm just happy to do it. So I, I want to keep keep on doing this job. That's outstanding. I mean, that that's cool. So we have breaking news right there. He will run for the seat one more. T- well, well, it's a three at least three. one more time. What's well, a, it's a it's a th- I know they changed the rules. It's now a four, three term limit. Four, four, four two year term. Four two year term limit. And then what about after? <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what. After the next go round, if you want to announce something, you, you're more than welcome to come here and announce it. We'll do. That, there, that's that, a deal. There we go. All right. So, want to thank uh, San Antonio City Councilman District One Roberto Trevino for coming out. Uh, that that is tremendous. What the work that goes on with with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, that is that is really something else. That yeah. they you get a couple of theaters, you get cosplayers to come out and really give these kids a life time experience yeah that's something they're going to remember yeah. for the rest of their lives and you know, thanks Elmo draft house for doing it first yes of all. absolutely they're everybody you know to your point we we literally we even created these vip badges and and you hear kids saying you know i've never been a vip and so you know you really changed their lives and 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 the message was you know we hope that this can help them uh, realize that they can follow their dreams I love it, and in in, awesome. in 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 the true spirit of really any sci-fi movie and adventure, uh, follow the dreams. Just go out and go do it.